On behalf of Pastor Scott, I'd like to welcome you to Dave United Methodist Church. Um, we have a few announcements this morning. First, um, if you have poinsettias, please, you're welcome to pick them up after today's service. We thank you for leaving them through all three Christmas Eve services. You might want to check the mailbox in the back, in the North Axe, because there's a bunch of Christmas cards in there. We have, in fact, um, separated them as well as we can, so you don't have to sort through all of them. Um, I want to say a personal thank you to Wesley, because if you missed the Christmas Eve services, you were, um, I don't even know how to describe how beautiful they were. The music was different, and, and it was powerful at all three services. Um, it was such a blessing to start our Christmas with those uh, candlelight services. So I'd like to say thank you, Wesley. <laughs> and all the musicians that were here because they were truly talented and shared their gifts with us. Um, so I'm gonna turn this over to Faye this morning and um, we'll start our prayer. Good morning. This morning we're gonna pray for Plantation United Methodist Church, Senior Pastor Marta Burke, the prayer that they requested was to pray for a new budget, leaders of the church and of our nation, for all that were impacted by COVID-19 and a return to normalcy. Let us pray. Father God, you are an awesome and mighty God. You have blessed us this Christmas season with family and loved ones, beautiful services, but most of all, we remember your gift, the gift of your son's life. We ask that we always remember to thank you. We ask you to heal those who are sick, to share love with those who are alone, and for all of us to hold on to each other in this time of struggles. Let us always remember that our faith is what people see. And on our faith, let them see your love, grace, and glory. In Father's name we pray. Amen. Care and fit 
just for heaven to live with thee there and fit us for heaven to live with thee there please stand for the reading of the word of God if you're able Psalms 148 one, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Two, praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Three, praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Four, praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Five, let them praise the name of the Lord for he commanded, and they were created. Six, he established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Seven, praise the Lord from the earth. You see monsters in all deeps. Eight, fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command. Nine, Mountains in all hills, fruit trees in all cedars. 10, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds. 11, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth. 12, young men and women alike, old and young together. 13, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. 14, he has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless this reading of his holy word. Please be seated. song that was requested by Corky, our guest speaker for today, a song called Everlasting God. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God. You reign forever, our hope, our strong deliverer. You are the everlasting God, the everlasting God. You do not think you won't grow As we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever, our hope, our strong
Please stand for the reading of the word of God, if you're able. Luke chapter 2, verses 22 through 32. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it was written in the law of God, Lord. Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light of revelation to the Gentiles, and for the glory to your people Israel. And may the Lord bless this reading of his holy word. Please be seated. Born the divine Christ child, play on the oboe and bagpipe merrily. He is born the divine Christ child. Sing we all of the Savior's birth through long ages of the past. Prophets have foretold his coming. Long ages of the past. Now the time has come at last. He is born, the divine Christ child. Play on the oboe and bagpipe merrily. He is born, the divine Christ child. Pray we all the Savior. On the oboe and bagpipe merrily, he is born the divine Christ child. Sing we all of the Savior mild, Jesus Lord of all the earth, coming as a child among us, Jesus Lord of all the Divine Christ child, play on the oboe and bagpipe merrily. He is born, the divine Christ child. Sing we all of the Savior's birth. Sing we all of the Savior birth. Sing we all of the Savior. Thank you, Wes. 
Leslie. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you this morning praising your glorious name. We come with joyful hearts, thankful for the gift of your loving son. We ask for your guiding hand on Plantation United Methodist Church and Pastor Burke. Lord, our hearts are heavy for those we lost to the virus and we long for a return to normalcy. We praise you, Lord, for the gifts you have bestowed on the doctors and scientists who have found vaccines and therapeutics. Guide us, O oh God, as we seek to do your will, ministering to one another and in our community. May we be a light to others as your son Jesus brings light to all. These things we humbly ask as we pray together the prayer Jesus taught us so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, please stand as you are able for the reading of the word of God. The second reading comes from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 33 to 40. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed. And a sword will pierce your own soul, too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived her, with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the, fa the favor of God was upon him. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Let us pray. Father, may the words of my mouth be your words. I ask that you open our ears to hear and our hearts to receive your blessing. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, I really want to thank Wesley for that song. When I was asked by Scott about five or six weeks ago if I could come and uh, bring a message today, I read the scriptures, and um, when I got to the Luke passage, that song just popped into my head and it wouldn't leave. Um, it's one of my favorite songs anyway, but I said, okay, God, I got it. We're talking about waiting. And so that's what happened. And, and that's all we've been doing, it seems like, for a very long time is waiting. Um, what a year it's been. Last year at this time, we were feeling good. We were enjoying our freedoms, prospering. And then within a month, we hear about a novel coronavirus. What? We were told to wait two weeks to flatten the curve. No indoor dining. Wait on the therapeutics. Wait on a vaccine. Work from home. Virtual school. Just wait. We're not very good at waiting. As children, we, we can't wait until Christmas. But what gets us through waiting? 
hope gets us through waiting. Hope's more than just dreaming about something. Hope, by its very definition, is it's a belief that something will eventually happen. There is a very real expectation of what you hope for coming true. As adults, we spend a lot of our time waiting. We wait in line. We wait for news. We wait for a response, for a promotion, for the next season of life, for a cure. Recently, we've been waiting for effective therapeutics and vaccines for this virus. But for the most part, our lives are characterized by speed, instant gratification, impatience, noise, activity, and occasionally we throw in a little panic. For most of us, we would rather do anything than wait. And this is the source of many problems for us. When we get impatient, we sometimes move too quickly or in the wrong direction. In the Old Testament and in the beginning of the New, we hear about people waiting for the Messiah. But people had different ideas of what the Messiah would be. Many were hoping and praying for a courageous warrior, a king, to come and save them. But God is always at work in our waiting. The scriptures are filled with people waiting. Many of the characters we associate with waiting did so because they had no control over their particular situation. However, it wasn't, and it still isn't, easy to do. Some of the more familiar Old Testament waiters, well, we have Abraham. He was called by God to father a great nation. It took many years and many experiences before he learned to discipline himself and wait on God. He learned that God will keep his promises, but that we must learn to wait. Then, of course, we have Joseph. He was sold by his brothers into slavery. He was falsely accused and sent to prison. He was forgotten and mistreated, but he learned to wait and that God had a purpose. Moses, Moses found himself on the backside of the Midian desert for 40 years. As he waited for God to use him, he learned well enough to later tell the people of Israel to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Probably the most famous waiter, and my grandmother was often referred to having the patience of Job. He is described as a man who was perfect and upright. God allowed him to encounter physical suffering that not only intensified with time, but he lost his children, his material wealth, his health, and his friends. He waited perhaps years before God delivered him from these calamities. And then we have Noah. Noah was told to build an ark. He was to keep faith until it rained. Noah waited over 100 years for something he had never seen before, rain. Through that experience, he gained much salvation for himself and his family. He also learned that God is true to his word. These were some very valuable lessons learned only through waiting. But they don't end in the Old Testament. The New Testament has examples of waiters. Jesus waited on God's will. The disciples waited in the upper room. Paul waited for three years so his heart and mind could be prepared for what God had for him to do. And today, in our scriptures, we have Simeon and Anna. Not some household names like some of the others that I've spoken of, but important. The passage we read in Luke chapter 2 is called The Presentation. Jesus is eight days old when he's circumcised according to the law. It's here he's named Jesus, or Savior, in obedience to what Gabriel had told Joseph before he had been conceived. Then after a period of time, 40 days according to the law in the book of Leviticus, Mary and Joseph bring the baby Jesus to the temple. 
This is a huge event for firstborn sons. The circumcision marked Jesus as a child of Abraham. And now there would be an offering as Mary and Joseph present their child to God. We heard in the scriptures it was two doves because their poverty level. Then what happens is as Diane started reading in verse 25, we hear that Simeon had been promised by God that he would not die until he saw the Messiah. I'm not sure how long he went into the temple before Mary and Joseph showed up, but each day was an anticipation. Maybe today he'll come. Maybe today he'll come. And then on this day, he did. What makes this so unique and special is that this man, Simeon, in Jerusalem, he was righteous and devout, and he was waiting. Verse 26 tells us it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. How? We don't know. But the Holy Spirit spoke this truth to Simeon in verse 26. You will not die until you see the Christ, the Messiah. One has to wonder how many babies he blessed, how many babies he held. Was he even expecting a baby? But on this day, the Holy Spirit moved Simeon into the temple courts. And when Mary and Joseph bring him bring Jesus to him, he takes this baby in his arms and praises God. It's hope fulfilled. The hope of Israel and the entire world. Because in verse 32 we learn that a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. What a long wait. Makes you wonder if we would have the stamina to wait. If we have the faith to wait. God fulfilled his promise just as he did to the, the people in the Old Testament. And Simeon had seen the Savior. Surely over the years he had prayed a thousand prayers hoped a thousand hopes, and suffered a thousand disappointments. Finally, his dream is realized, and he could die in peace. God rewarded his waiting. Then in, in verse 36, we learn about Anna. Anna was a prophet and a daughter of Phanuel from the tribe of Asher. Like Simeon, Anna was devout, old, and a prophet. Like Simeon, she recognized this child as the Messiah. Simeon was in the temple because the Spirit guided him there. Joseph and Mary and the baby Jesus were there to fulfill the requirements of the law. Anna was always there. Both Simeon and Anna have lived faith-filled, expectant lives. Simeon lived his life according to the scripture, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, waiting. Anna worshiped in the temple day and night. She was old and she never ceased to hope, never ceased to worship, never ceased to pray. She waited, not a bad model for us to emulate. We have been waiting, praying, and hoping ourselves that we would find therapeutics and a vaccine to combat this virus. Today, we thank God the wait for these breakthroughs did not take the usual five or 10 years and that we have hope. But in our waiting, we need to hear these words from 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 through 9. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. And also in Romans 8, verse 25, but if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Hope, faith, 
patience, prayer. That's what makes waiting easier, less stressful. Action needs to happen in the waiting. Noah built an ark. Moses traveled. Some would say he wandered in the desert. They all prayed, had hope, had faith, and certainly patience. Today, many believers are again waiting, waiting on the second coming. Again, people have their own idea of what that will be like. All books are read and envisioned differently by people. So no wonder there are so many perceptions of what it will be like and when it will happen. Jesus tells us he knows not the time, and we are encouraged to do the work of the Lord while we wait. We are approaching December 31st, otherwise known as Watch Night. Have you heard of it? We have once or twice celebrated Watch Night in our church. The tradition of Watch Night may be traced to early 1700s in the Moravian churches. And churchgoers began marking the occasion with a vigil to reflect upon the year past and to contemplate the one to come. In the mid 1700s, John Wesley adopted the practice for his Methodist followers. In this New Year's Eve service, people were invited to review the year, confess to sins, and pray for the year ahead, a service of recommitment. In this country, on southern plantations, slaves gathered together with family and friends waiting for the word if they would be sold and separated from their families for the new year. But it was given new significance among African Americans and others in, on December 31st, in 1862, when according to tradition, slaves in the Confederate States gathered in churches and homes and often together with abolitionists on that night, the night before President Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation was put into effect. The soon to be freed slaves stayed awake all night and watched as the night turned into a new dawn while waiting for the news that the Emancipation Proclamation had in fact been issued, thus making all slaves free. It is still celebrated in many predominantly African American churches and now is often referred to as Freedom's Eve. It evolved into an evening that honors the past, celebrates fellowship, and takes an opportunity to rededicate people's lives to Christ. In modern times, it's the church, it's time to come together and celebrate life itself. It celebrates surviving dangers seen and unseen, rejoicing in making it to the end of another year, and sharing how we've progressed and been blessed. This year, 2020, it seems even more significant for all of us to reflect on the year past and how we handled it and recommit ourselves to the stated purpose of our church. We adopted a purpose that says we are transforming lives through sharing the promise and hope of God's love. In conclusion, I, I would like to leave these thoughts with you. Waiting on God involves trusting him, reading his word so we can listen to him, praying to him, and resting in him quietly. Are you a waiter? Too often we run ahead of God when we ought to be waiting upon him. Will we make the best use of our time, including in times of waiting? We do not know when Jesus will return or when our lives on earth will come to an end. But we do have an everlasting hope found in Jesus. Let's make our waiting worth it and trust him in all things and at all times. He is faithful and keeps his promises. Let us pray. Father God, we ask your presence as we usher out the old year and usher in the new. When Jesus was presented in the temple, 
Two older people modeled watching and waiting, recognizing and giving thanks. May we draw strength from their examples. We ask that like Simeon and Anna, we may recognize Jesus in surprising places and present him to the people of this time. Like Simeon, we praise your, your glory, Lord, and like Anna, we just look at Jesus and praise you, our God. Jesus, you share our humanity in every way, and like you, we want to grow and become stronger, filled with wisdom. In praise and adoration, we pray. Amen. We want to thank Torky for that wonderful message, and this is a season of joy, so we're going to invite you to stand up, and we're going to, well, I'm going to sing. You can clap along with me as we do a modern take on Joy to the World. exits in the front and back. The ushers will escort you. There's also um, offering plates if you have tithes and offerings you want to put in. If you're watching at home, uh, if you go to the home page and scroll down to the middle, there's a link that you can um, share your tithe and offering. Before I close, I want to share this little story. I posted it. Um, I received it on Facebook, and then I reposted it, and it was about an Irish tradition for the end of the year. At around midnight on December 31st, people in Ireland opened their front door to let the old year out and let the new year in. As we begin a new year, may God fill you with hope and peace and love. Now go open all your doors. <laughs> <laughs>